DC Comics sales have been trending in a very bad direction. We finally had the February 2022 sales from ICV2.com. Now, these aren't definitive. These are from comic shops. They use Comic Hub, and they project out the sales of titles from Marvel, DC, and a bunch of different distributors out you know, essentially nationwide, and they do a rack and staff. We don't know exactly the sales volume, and I'm sure there are some discrepancies as far as uh, the list itself, but it gives us a good general idea of what's going on in comic books. And they somehow look even worse in February 22, 2022 than they did in January and December, which are absolutely horrifying. And here with me to talk about that is the DC Comics aficionado himself. How you doing, Josh? Uh, Josh McDonald? <laughs> Forgot your name. I, <laughs> I literally had a second where I was like, I looked up, I was like, I wonder if he's going to say Josh Williamson today. I almost did. Like, uh, Josh, I'm good, <laughs> man. I'm having a good day. Good morning. I wish I could say I enjoyed these comics this week a little more but uh you know uh i think it goes in line with what we're about to talk about in sales units and where dc is falling so in december of 2021 dc only had 16 titles in the top 50 in january they were down to 11 titles in the top 50 which would be a 22 percent market share of the top 50 comic sales in february they only have nine yeah <laughs> only 18 percent it's absolutely insane. How much trouble do you think DC Comics are actually in? They literally can't sell anything but Batman, and even Batman appears to be trending down a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, Batman kind of always teeters around the top three in terms of unit sales, and that's what we're seeing here. So I think I'm talking Bat about Batman as a whole. Oh, Batman as a whole, yeah. Batman titles dropping out. It, it, you're going to get fatigue. You've got too much out there. People can't keep up. People can't afford it. Uh, you know, like right now, people are saying, "Hey, a gallon of gas or a comic book," and they're clearly having to go a gallon of gas. Um, but yeah, no, things don't look good for DC. And I think the problem isn't just that the readership is dropping and the units are dropping. I think it's also a problem that they're acting like there's not a problem. They're taking a tremendous amount of risk considering their, their the state of DC comics in the current market. There mm -hmm. is one title of those nine that isn't technically a Batman comic book. That's Monkey Prince number one. So you're like, well, it's a number one comic. I mean, it is what it is. I They know Batman will sell to a certain degree, so they're slapping Batman on everything. And, and I think they're looking at that as the resolution to the problem they're facing, and it's not. Um, I think good stories and good writing and good art will be the re resolution to the problems, and it won't come overnight. Uh, but as long as they sit here and say, no, we're doing great stuff, we're going to keep getting this and they're going to keep seeing this. And I don't know what it's going to take for them to course correct. You know, maybe it's going to have to be until they have like only five comics in the top 50. Who knows? I mean, Detective Comics took up four slots, three slots for January slots. alone. Yes. So once it backs down to where it's not a weekly title, what does that look like then? You would expect the number to go up since they have a weekly Batman event. Although the Batman series itself has gone to monthly instead of bi-monthly. Yeah. So that has been a change, but they certainly made more than made up for it with this Shadows of the Bad event that's going on. And if we kind of look at what DC Comics specifically after Future State, which it feels like they've continued on far too many of those plot points and ideas currently into DC Comics, I think they've actually driven a lot of people away. But it's not just that, Josh. I think that they have brought in so many cr creators that people aren't familiar with. And so many of them have turned out to be pretty bad. Clun Rad on Wonder Woman, Stephanie Phillips on Harley Quid. We've got uh, Tim Sheridan over on, on Teen Titans. And so, so many people have had bad experiences with these creators that they're not familiar with. That the couple of good ones that they did bring in, you know, the one that really jumps to my mind is Jeremy Adams over on Flash. Yep. Nobody's even talking about it because I think everyone's just scared to go in on a DC Comics title that isn't Batman and doesn't have a creator that they're completely familiar with. And they got rid of all their big name creators. I, you know, it, it's a, it's a sad situation because if you look at the flash in general, uh, part of the reason that book was doing well was because Josh Williamson was on it for so long and it was a reliable book. It wasn't perfect, but you knew if you picked it up, you would be entertained by it. And you'd most likely enjoy it. If not really love it. And then they move straight into fear state where th it's just terrible. It's absolute, just a pile of dog shit. And it's a new writer there. And then you get another new writer for when the series actually starts. But I don't think people made the connection. I think they're like, oh, it's just that wh whoever that was. And then a lot of people a think Jeremy Adams wrote that future state flash yep. story. That was brain and Vietti. Who's yep. a big time uh, name within DC animation. And everybody hated that brain and Vietti story. And I think they just assume that he's come come along for the ride, and it's a completely new writer that's 
doing yep. so many cool things with Wally West. If you like Wally West, this is a series you'll probably like, but DC Comics can't even sell it at this point because they tarnished Wally West so badly. They've tarnished Wally West so bad. And, and they're not even trying to sell it. You know, it's one of those things where um, I, I was one of the people that did not pick up Flash. It was more so of a, a time constraint for me. Uh, but then the moment I started hearing positive buzz, I was like, all right, we'll see. And then I kept hearing positive buzz. So I was like, okay, let's let's go back. Let's catch up. And it's well worth a read. And nobody's talking about it when they should be. Um, and I blame that on DC. Like if you went and promoted the books that people are speaking to positively, rather than putting so much time and attention to things that people are speaking to negatively, you'd probably see a different outcome with your sales. It's crazy. I'm. It feels like they're kind of betting that Dark Crisis, which is only a couple of years removed from Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Last Crisis, is really going to be that, I don't know, that springboard that's going to reignite enthusiasm for DC Comics readers. They are putting so much pressure on Joshua Williamson. I kind of just talked about it when they released the identity of the new Justice League. You know, out are our classic heroes. We've got John John Kent in as Superman. We got Jace Fox in as Batman. We have Yara Ford as Wonder Woman. Jackson Hyde in as Aquaman, and JoJo Mullins in as Green Lantern. And they expect Joshua Williamson to be able to sell this. I don't think people are going to be coming in. It's going to sell because it's a crisis and it's a DC event. Yeah. But it's not going to be the bestseller. No. It's just going to be somewhere in the middle of the pack, probably. Yep. I, I don't think it's going to be a top seller. I also don't think it's going to resonate with people because it's going to feel like so much of a been there, done that. No matter what they do that could be differently, the fact that we're doing another crisis, that we're doing another, like, even if it's a soft, a soft reset, roughly a year from doing a soft reset, it's people aren't going to respond. They're, they're tired of these reboots and these soft reboots and these resets and these like, okay, we, you know, flub, let's do it again. They're sick of it. They're just come in, tell a story and let us have that story. It feels like there's a big difference between DC comics readers and Marvel comics readers. It feels like Marvel comics readers, maybe because of the amount of volume and they do feature a lot more different characters there are more willing to, to weather the bad times than maybe DC yeah. fans. It feels like DC fans are like, you know what? I'm not here to waste my money. And I think they've misjudged the marketplace and their own fandom and what they want. And they're just sitting here holding Batman and nothing else. Yeah. I, you know, it's an interesting point. I think, and, and I know Vertigo is not around anymore, but I think DC fans to a degree were, are more open to stepping outside of DC into a potential indie book uh, because DC had Vertigo so close to them under their umbrella and they would, you know, cross uh, creator. So you would have someone that just really took off at DC and they would do a book under the, the Vertigo umbrella that would be successful and good. And people would trickle over because they liked that creator. And then that opened them up to like, hey, like, why haven't I been checking out indies? We should definitely check them out. I think DC may have inadvertently created an audience that is more open to stepping outside of their monthly trend if they don't like something to check something else out where Marvel is strictly like, here's our stuff. We're a core brand. Take it or leave it. Some of the indie publishers are really trending up. We're seeing a lot of, of high-selling indie comic books, specifically the Spawnverse kind of stuff with yep. with uh, Todd McFarland. The Berserker series is still selling well, even despite some delays here and there. We've seen James Tynan, DC Comics creator, went to Substack. He's also got some successful stuff going on in the indie scene. Yep. And I, I think you might be right that, hey, if I like James Tynan, but I don't like what's going on with Batman, maybe I just want to go read James Tynan. Yeah, I mean, and he he has plenty to offer. Like he had three or four indie books out, uh, either through uh, Image or Boom uh, that mm -hmm. you could go pick up. Uh, look at Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns kind of got a little disgruntled with DC, stepped away, uh, which is crazy because it was like right on the hills of Three Jokers, which sold incredibly well. Yeah, and you know there there was the reports, the rumors that were out there that he when he reached out to DC again about the follow up to Three Jokers didn't get a response. So now you've got like, okay, fine. I'll just go over here and I'll do this. And like, whatever, reach out. Whenever Scott Snyder, show. another one of their best sellers, got yeah, the comicsology lines. He's got titles over at Image, you know, going to be coming out on, on Dark Horse. Jeff Lemire, who would be yep. somebody you would associate with those Vertigo type titles. Yep. Got plenty to offer other places than DC. I, I mean, even if you look at like Dan Abnett and Robert Venditti, they are putting their time and efforts in other things now. And I think DC got a little too arrogant that their brand is stronger than their creators. And in some respects, yes, but that's not going to last. And I think that's what they're seeing right now is, is people, you know, were in tune because you had quality talent there. And now you don't, generally speaking, you don't have quality talent on these books. 
I do have to applaud DC and give them credit for. I don't think they found the right writers for their books, but for the most part, the artistic talent, even with the the big losses that they had, your Gary Frank, your Jason yep. Fabok, your Greg Capullos, they've kind of been able to fill it in with new good good artists at least. If Jim Lee can do one thing, apparently he can spot a really good <laughs> comic book artist, but it's the writing yeah. it just isn't there right now. Absolutely. You know, I was going to say if there's one thing Jim Lee is controlling in that office. It's the writers that they I mean, the artists that they use for their books. And you're right. And I do think, too, that they actually take the time to nurture their artists and make sure that they are good fits for the books. Because um, Jorge Jimenez became a, a well-known name when he stepped on the Batman. But he did Super Sons before that. And he did mm-hmm. Earth 2 uh, before that. So he's been around for years. And it's just people hadn't really checked out his work. And the moment he got into a spotlight... Um, you know, he, he just took off and maybe that's thanks to someone like Scott Snyder saying, no, this guy's excellent. Just go ahead and pull him up. Or maybe it was Jim saying like, yeah, he's, he's proved himself. He's come in, he's done the work, he's quality. Let's give him a shot. Either way, they nurture their, they nurture their artist artistic talent and they give them the chances they need to succeed. Whereas writers, they just like throw whatever they can at the wall to see what sticks. Something obviously is not resonating with DC comics fades. DC Comics numbers just continuously trend downwards as far as unit ship based on the projections of ICV2.com as well as Comicron. It looks to me that DC Comics are in serious trouble. They better hope that Dark Crisis resonates better than it feels like it's resonating from my end because it feels like a lot of people are automatically rejecting this with the these new superheroes being called the Justice League. Why not just bring in the, the legacy characters to replace it? They just have a side team <laughs> like they could be along for the ride. But Nightwing, Donna Troy, you know, these these characters that everyone knows and have been part of the universe for so long, you know, kind of stepping up. But pushing them to the side, I think, is just going to make it worse, yeah. you know, in the coming months ahead. And I just don't see anything really, you know, sparking interest in DC readers outside of Batman for the foreseeable future within for the next five or six months. No, and that's a shame because, like it, like we mentioned, there are good books out there. So go check out the Flash. Uh, go check out uh, Daniel Warren Johnson on uh, Action Comics. Like they're good books. People just need to read them. It's Philip Kennedy Johnson. Philip, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. This, it's a cadence <laughs> thing because they have three names each. The damn Johnsons, Jesus! But I haven't Daniel had enough Warren coffee Johnson. yet does have Jurassic League coming up in the not-too-distant future. That one ought to look good. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little cringe, but I love dinosaurs, and I love him, so I'm curious to see where he goes. So, And if you haven't read Murder Falcon... Oh, yeah. like I'm I'm definitely picking it up, and then we'll see what happens. I've got a six-year-old. It'll be right in our wheel. Hell, yeah. (laughs) I don't have a six-year-old. I'll just say I'm a six-year-old at heart sometimes. If you're wondering what the hell actually happened at DC Comics, Josh and I talk about recently how DC kind of ruined the sales or hurt the sales of a lot of their key characters... We'd list them one by one and talk about the DC decisions that kind of ruin the sales for those characters. Definitely check this video out if you want to see what's been happening at DC Comics for the past two or three years that has really impacted their sales for every character but Batman.